Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the USSA Pro Star Series, Chasing the Checkers. It's Brett, and uh, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus here for a couple of weeks because we've been working sled stuff and yeah. racing and uh, having a good time, but it's it's always time to get back to uh, meeting the unique personalities in our sport. And today I'm very happy and, uh, and pleased to be chatting with number 233, Mr. Matt Bennett. So welcome, Matt. How's it going? It's going well. How about you? That's good. That's good. We're just um, taking a little bit of time off and hanging out with some family, and me and Dad, we're going to go throw bags tonight, so. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I got to have some fun, some stuff to do right. with uh, <laughs> the off race nights and that type of stuff, so yep. um, you're a, a relatively fresh face to the champ division. Tell us a little bit about your history before you uh, got up to the pro champ level. Uh, we started racing vintage. Dad did in 2001 or two, and I was like a year after that. Um, started a little club in MVSRS and Ryan Lander we raced there pretty much every other weekend, eight, nine weekends out of the year. So um, grew up pretty much racing a little 300 in Ticer Yamaha mm -hmm. and moved up to like a 340 and then a 440. And the club, unfortunately, was falling apart. We stepped away. We moved up to Pro Vintage and kind of took off there. Won a lot of class championships in the 440 Superstock classes and a 500. And, um, and then, you know, once... Once we kind of moved on from there, we ended up buying the Pro Light, and Greg helped us out with that, and here, well, here we are. A pretty big jump from F500 to Pro Light, or not too bad? Uh, I mean, yeah, it was kind of a jump. It was more, you know, from a team standpoint, it was harder for us to quite understand the Pro Light than anything else, but. Yeah, nothing you couldn't handle along the way. Right, yeah, we figured it out pretty quick, yeah. I feel. <laughs> yeah. um, when you say we, who helps you on the weekends? Uh, it's mainly dad and I, and then, um, Greg Basom, he'll be there and Don Westbrook and then Grant Puffer when they're available. Okay. So they're usually hanging out in the trailer and helping with different things on the sled as needed. Yep. And it's, it's kind of a relief off our shoulders. You know, I can trust Greg and Don or Greg, um, Grant and Don quite a bit, you know, so I kind of give them a task and they do it. And, you know, I feel comfortable when we leave that trailer that everything's checked over and tight and, you know, something we don't have to worry about. Yeah, that's that's a huge relief when you're pulling up to the line doing the speed you guys are going to not have to be thinking yeah. about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, you're one of the one of the unique champ racers that runs classes other than champ. And I know a couple of the guys run F3, but really other than that, you're still racing some other classes when you're there on the weekend. Yeah, we still uh, pull out the old leafer, the old 440 fan, and I just en I enjoy riding the sled, you know. And I got a lot of good friends that we race with um, every weekend, so it's good to just go out and have fun with them and. You know, it's yeah. still a workout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I like I like to say the champ's hard to drive, but there's some days, I don't know, <laughs> it's a pretty toss-up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good insight. I mean, you know, people think those those vintage classes and the, the some of the stock classes are easy, but, man, when you see them going down the track, they're a handful. Hey, yeah, I know. Like, we'll go off for a test session on the Pro Light, you know, first, and I'm like, oh, that's smooth, or the Pro Champ, and then take the leaf from I'm like, oh, my God, this track is rough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of champ, you had uh, what I think is a really good weekend at Eagle River for the World Championship weekend. How, how would you describe it? You, do you, same feelings? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Friday and Friday during the day and right off the bat, you know, we, we felt fast. We had issues in qualifying, um, which we had last year there, which we thought was snow dust related. And here it was just, you know, carb issue. Um, but when we came out Friday night in that first heat, and to stay with Gunner, like we were super, super happy. And even the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, it it sucked having them, but it was good because it was a good uh, comparison of where we were going to be at, kind of for the weekend. Right, right. What um, you brought up that format, <coughs> scale of one to ten, give me a number as to how you think that one-on-one -on -one format for Friday night went. Driver-wise, like I'd rate it at an eight. Like it was something different. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, from a lot of fans' perspective, a lot of them didn't like it. They want to see, you know, the top 10 battling out in the final. Right. Yeah, I think I heard a little bit of the similarities. I mean, it, it was good to try something, but you, yep. know, you come there to watch the Sweet 16 night. You want to see a couple of heats of a number of drivers taking a shot at it. And you want to see a 16-lap final. That's that's kind of what I heard. So Right. And I think, like, you know, they do that in Snowcross, too, and it's a really, it's a really cool thing to see in Snowcross. But there's a lot of other elements in Snowcross that that fits for. I mean, the track's bigger, it's longer, it's more rider than it is speed um, on the Snowcross track. So, I mean, for that, I think it works really well. I don't know if it's quite the answer for Ice Oval. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Change is hard, too, you know, so it's okay to try things once in a while. So, right. Uh, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Yeah. So uh, you and I were talking before we got started here. Um, tell me where you're sitting right now. I am sitting in my iRacing simulator that I've built a little bit <laughs> at a time and um, kind of got the whole wheel, keyboard, shifter. Um, yeah, you, I, <clears throat> you were telling me a little bit about what you think that's done for your snowmobile racing. Yeah, so like even growing up as a kid, just playing on Xbox, you know, I always did a lot of racing games. And once I switched to this, like it helps me, you know, because you're racing against somebody else. It's not a computer. It's not generated line. Um, you're racing against somebody and it kind of makes you watch their line and, you know, plan your next move is what I would put it as. Yeah, that's that's something that I guess um, I haven't seen any software that does it for any sort of snowmobile racing. Uh, no, no. And, and I do a lot of like... <laughs> dirt track on here i don't do much asphalt i find it kind of boring myself but that's just me <laughs> well you know champs like kinds of can tend to pitch you in the corners just like a, a dirt car would so yep yep yeah um who helps you make a, a season come together what do you what tell us a little bit about your sponsors and uh and who's helping you get around the track yeah uh the big ones greg baso main out of michigan he's the one that owns our champ sled and supports us year to year and season to season. And we appreciate, you know, the opportunity that he's gave me and, you know, becoming good friends with him and his family is awesome too. Um, Mid Valley Industrial Services out of Hortonville, they kind of took over our main sponsorship for us and they help us out quite a bit with getting our trailer washed and whatever we need and parts cleaned up. Um, Station two out of Bear Creek, you know, bar owner that became good friends with us, Easy Bar and Grill, another um, bar that, you know, we kind of became good friends with. And then, of course, Quick Trip, which they're all over and everybody loves Quick Trip, right? Right, right. <laughs> and then um, we still got a lot of sponsors, um, like Black Otter Supper Club, Anytime Fitness, Mobile and Go. They've been with us for almost 10 years now. And Cloverland Service Center out of Eagle River, they've been with us for almost 10 years. So we got a good, long-running um, list of sponsors that stay with us and became really good friends. So we, we like that and we like um, advertising for them. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm, I'm so fortunate doing a number of these uh, these interviews to to really get a better grasp as to how important the sponsorships are to the individual race teams and really how many businesses have stepped up in our sport to help out racers like yourself. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's not necessarily big national people. You know, sometimes it's just mom and pop businesses that are going, hey, we like this kind of stuff and we'd love to help out. Yep. Yeah, and we wouldn't be doing it without them, that's for sure. I mean, they, they help out a lot from, you know, funding us to go into the races, buying fuel and race fuel and hotels, and uh, yeah, we wouldn't be doing it without them. Yeah, for sure. Good. You ready for some fun stuff? Ready. All right. So, the world wants to know, single, engaged, married, committed, looking, seeking, what are you? In a, in a relationship. You are? Yeah. Right. See, that's something I didn't know because I haven't seen anybody <laughs> at, the, at the racetrack. With oh, you, she's, so. she's been there. She just kind of hangs out and back and my mom and my sister. Okay, well, next time almost... I expect an introduction next time. <laughs> Be almost two years in July. <laughs> Great. Um, what's your favorite race city? Oof. Like for anything? No, for snowmobile racing. No, oh, I'm going to say why we go. Oh, okay. It's a lot of fun. Um, assuming you ran a full schedule um, in a winter, how many miles would you log driving back and forth? Oh, God. <laughs> I'd like, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of last year, like what we had. I'm pretty sure we were like 4,000 maybe ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of hauling. Depends on how far we want to go. <laughs> yeah, good point. Have you run Beausjour or any place like that? Yeah, we did. Uh, last year was our first time going up there and we had a blast. It was just me and dad, so we were kind of stressed out that weekend. But, you know, we, yeah. we drove up, started Thursday night. We drove all the way through, got there Friday morning, tested all day, and then went back to our Airbnb that we got that night. Wow. But yeah, it was it was fun. We had a blast up there. Where's the number 233 come from? Uh long story when my or when Eric and Dad started, he dad was 33, Eric was 32. So like I kind of just flip flopped the numbers around and made 233. And then my buddy Matt was racing with us, he became 332. Oh. <laughs> just my number just backwards. So yeah, that's kind of no like family history besides for that. Oh, well, that's good. Um What's the best race you ever lost? I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't think of them. Like nothing sticks out where you came in a close second and. No, I've, mm, no, hmm? no, can't think no. of nothing. 
Maybe that's good. Maybe you put that kind of stuff behind you and move forward. Um, yeah. What's your favorite movie? Um, mm. That's a good one, too. <laughs> Even though I don't want to watch a lot of movies, but uh, dang. These are tough ones, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't watch movies, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, then I'll, uh, I'll let you off on an easy one. How about this one? We'll replace that with who's your celebrity crush? Oh, God. Go Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, I've asked a number of drivers and, uh, and other people along the way here to, to help us prepare the next generation of racers. You know, the junior sprinters, the junior two sprinters, those racers that are coming up that are, are cutting their teeth on some of, the, some of the faster sleds and starting to move forward. What do you think is a good tip from uh, people at your level to say, hey, if, if I was going through the race stages back then, if somebody would have told me this, I'd be a better racer today for it. You know, for, for me coming up, like I always had that attitude, like never give up. Like if you're feeling down, just know you could always do better. You just got to, you know, work for it. Never quit, you know, just keep pushing through. Like we've had a lot of moments with that, even moving up to pro champ, like you feel like you're, you're not going anywhere and this ain't the class for you, but you know, just keep working for it. Keep putting your time into it. And, um, just move on, you know, keep pushing yourself and pushing your team and you'll get there eventually. That's a really good point. Cause one of the things that I've noticed getting to know, you know, the, the champ field better is there's a personality I see that's maybe an hour, two hours before race time. And then there's a different personality I see 10 minutes before race time. So there's this level of concentration that ratchets up and this mental state that you guys bring to the track is, is really something to see. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, we like to go out and talk around with people and especially me, you know, I like to get out and, um, but yeah, when it's getting close to like race time, it's like all focused. And, you know, now that we got the new race trailer, we got, we got a full wall in there with the door. So like dad will shut the door, just stay out of here. We need it. We need to concentrate for a minute, you know? So yeah, that's a different, different feeling. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been great to catch up with you, Matt. I'm really impressed with yeah, you too, done this year. Um, when I'm, talking to people in the stands and talking to people out and about on the property, your name is starting to come up is uh, I think in the beginning, a little bit of a surprise is how well you were running and how much you're, you're catching up to uh, the big four or whatever you want to call me. The guys that are really yep. up at the top this year. So uh, it speaks volumes about you and your team and, uh, and really happy to have you out there racing with us. So the big final question, I mean, I have to ask everybody and there's really only one right answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Reese's peanut butter cup or Snickers? Reese's peanut butter cup just for you. Just for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, great to talk to you, Matt. Look forward to seeing you at the racetrack soon. Yeah, thank you, Brett.